Thousand Azimah. They have gained the ultimate victory. May Allah make you all amongst the Faizin, the most victorious ones. So next time you or I speak about success, always remember ultimate success is connected to how much you obey Allah and His Messenger. So for example, if there are 100 commands, the more of the 100 you fulfill, the more successful you are. May Allah make us fulfill all the commands as much as possible. I mean, Rabbil Alameen. With this being said, brothers and sisters, in one of my previous jobs, I made a big mistake that was going to cause a large financial loss. I was nervous, I was anxious, I was stressed out. The big impact financially on the company. And then someone came to me and he said, you know what, I know someone who can help your problem. Really, yes, he can solve it. Who is that person? His office is in such and such location. Go to him. So while I'm going to this person, nervous and all that stuff, someone stops me and asks, Majid, where are you going? So I told him, I'm going to meet this person as you heard of the problem that I did. And I was told this man may be able to solve the issue. He told me, oh, you're going to this nice guy. You're going to this nice guy. Without me continuing the story, many of you would agree that me knowing the person I'm about to meet is also known as the nice guy makes me feel comfortable. That they will not make fun of me. The nice guy will be someone who's understanding. The nice guy, someone who will give me steps to never repeat this again. The nice guy will never make fun of me and mock me. All these feelings and much more just because of one attribute, nice guy. Allah is the best of examples. How do you feel, yes you, when you are told Allah is Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim? Is that feeling comfortable? Because many of you nodded right now. I was giving many of you like this when I said nice guy makes you feel comfortable. I told you Allah is Ar-Rahim. How do you feel? You have hope? Will you give up? Allah, Ar-Razzaq, the provider, will you be hopeless towards getting a job and halal income? Allah al-Shafi, the one who cures. How do you feel? Okay, how about this one? Allah al-Mujib. What is that? Al-Mujib, the one who answers your call whenever you call upon him. Allah al-Mujib, the one who gives you whatever is best for you whenever you ask, whenever you ask him. If that does not make us slightly comfortable, then let's be very frank and blunt as this is a sign that we may not understand Allah very well. May Allah forgive us. Look at Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu. He says a statement divided into two. First part, inni la ahmilu hamma al-ijaba. He says, I am not worried whether Allah will respond to my call or not. I'm not concerned. I know 100% if I ask him for something, he will respond. Then what are you concerned about? The other half. What's the other half? I'm concerned whether I will put the effort to make dua. Allahu Akbar. That's what I'm worried about. I'm worried, am I really going to make dua to Allah? Am I going to ask Allah? That's my concern. I know the moment I do that, I got to answer it. It's over. So my concern is my part, not his part. Allahu Akbar. How did he feel like that? Because he knows Allah is Al-Mujib. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many a hadith and ayat in the Quran and much of this khutbah, if I want to put a title to it, it's dua. The khutbah is about dua. But much of the khutbah is about who are you asking from, not as much as what should you do. Because when you know who you're asking from, everything changes. Agreed? If I don't do fundraising, but even you don't, may not do fundraising, but you agree with me, that when a fundraiser comes and asks for money, beforehand he asks the people, what's the social status, right? How is the economy? And then he knows, oh, what's, what, where should I start? Should I start with 50,000? Yeah, here start 50,000. Actually, no, here's 75, or 25, or 10, etc. So when you know your crowd, your judge, you're asking based on that. Allah is the best of examples. I want to spend much of the khutbah about who are we asking from because that can change your life completely. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said 
an authentic narration, which Allah said, Ya ibadi, O my slave. So every slave pay attention. Ya ibadi, O my slave. Yes, Ya Allah. لو أن أولكم وآخركم if all of you from the beginning of time till the end of time الله أكبر إنسكم وجنكم all the human beings and the jinn قاموا في صعيد واحد فسألوني all of you the same exact instant went to Allah and asked Allah for something فأعطيت كل إنسان منهم مسألته I'll give everyone whatever they asked for الله أكبر لم ينقص ذلك من ملك شيئا إلا كما ينقص البحر عندما يغمس المخيط غمسة واحدة. My kingdom does not get diminished. My account does not decrease except what is decreased from an ocean when you dip a needle into it. When you put a needle into an ocean, how much water did the ocean lose? Nothing. This is who you ask from. الله أكبر. Right now, right now, two people, brother. Brother, I mean, who, who, who's speaking? Two people. I get confused. Two people. Allah says, in Sanjin Adam to the end, all that stuff, I give you all, and my account will not diminish. Allahu Akbar. It's amazing how as Sami' the all hearing, was not confused. It's amazing Al Basir, the all seeing, know who was asking. And what's really amazing, how Al Mujib gave everybody what they asked for. Allahu Akbar. Whatever is best for them. They have to appreciate these things. In an ayah that many of us know. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي And when my slaves ask you about me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ وَجِيبُ I am close and near. So Allah wants to tell you that I'm very close. So Allah's name come up, Al-Qareeb. Why? Because there's benefits to it. When you know someone is so close to you, Allah is so close to you, you become comfortable asking for things. You already know. You don't go into a lot of detail. You don't say, Ya Allah, my rear right tire is 22 PSI. Ya Allah, help me it become 33. You don't do that. Ya Allah, help me with my car. Because he's Qareeb. Allah Qareeb makes you feel comfortable to ask for things others think it's silly. I had a brother send me a message. He's like, is it embarrassing? Is it wrong to ask Allah for a Samsung phone, the previous model? I'm like, subhanAllah, Qareeb already knows, he yujib. SubhanAllah, all these things to appreciate. I'll tell you this true story. There's a brother saying to Shaykh Muhammad Hassan, he's mentioned this, in which there's a sister, her husband had to travel for some time. So her husband had to travel for some time. He left the wife and the kid and asked them, in the meantime, go to your father's place until I come back. Very, very poor family. The mother with her child, she goes to her father's place. The, young, the, the, the grandchild gets very sick. All what the mother can do, two things. Number one, make dua to Allah to cure her child. Number two, because the fever was high, she got a wet towel, put it on the forehead to lower the temperature. She did everything she can. The means from dua to putting that towel. Make dua to Allah, dua to Allah. Allah is my witness, this has been publicized, this story. Someone comes, approximately 2 a.m., around that time or so, wearing a suit, briefcase. Assalamu alaikum, how can I help you? I'm here to check on your grandchild. What? The mother put her hijab on, the grandpa's there. Oh, sh what is this? Just bring him in, he's, he's coming to see the grandchild. Come in. And then he said, where is she at? She's right here. He checks on the grandchild. He's like, you know what? Her case is serious. But inshallah, with some medication, here's the prescription. You can go buy it from the pharmacy. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. He leaves. He stands by the door of the apartment. And he waits. It, it's getting awkward because, okay, thank you. Now go back to where you came from. But he's standing. He told the lady, where is the fee for the private visit? I came all the way here for a private visitation. There's a cost to it. Where's the fee? She said, well, we, we, we never called you. So you're stingy and a liar. Wallahi, we never called you. We don't even have a house on our phone. He said, isn't this the apartment of so-and-so? She said, no, it's next, next door. So the doctor looked at her. He says, Wallahi, there's no such thing as coincidence in Islam. Everything is 
calculated inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadar decreed and Allah sent me to you on know your story after I'm done he finished with those who actually called him finished with them they came back to that first apartment what's your story she told him the story grandpa said the story well my daughter's husband left for some time she's staying over my place the grandchild got sick and that's our situation he said listen give me the prescription I'm gonna pay for all the medication I will give you a monthly allowance until your husband comes back true story will lie monthly allowance until your husband comes back and he did after some time who came back the husband husband saw alhamdulillah wife is doing well child is doing well she told him about the doctor he said let's go thank him so they went and thanked him and obviously the allowance stopped at that point because he said until your husband comes back and subhanallah they appreciated that any time after that day things go difficult financially the wife tell her husband how about you leave for some time have Allah provide for us she lived she lived with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful name she appreciated that Allah al mujib will respond she never had a phone but she knows Allah answers Allahu Akbar this is something to appreciate brothers and sisters I'm sure many of you have stories like that you made dua to Allah and out of nowhere things happen I know for a fact because you know what shaitan does? Shaitan does his absolute best. Pay attention. Shaitan does his best to make you forget that Allah accepted your dua. You made so much dua, Allah accepted, but you're like, I don't remember. Maybe no, he accepted a lot. But then you say, Well, my resume is good. Well, my the college that I went to, well, you know the connection, the brother, mashallah, he hooked me up with you know that company. It was Allah Jalla Jalalu. Your mom was praying for you, and then Allah delivered that man to help you. You prayed to Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped you ad address your resume like that. May Allah protect us. When you hear stories like that, it should incite you to go and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, excite you in the way. Don't respond because we're in the khutbah, but just I want you to be very truthful with yourself. If you see a brother or a sister in the first row, very old, very, very, very old brother, okay, and he's making dua to Allah, he's shivering, and their hair is all white, very old, not one single black hair, not even gray, white, everything, old. What is he making dua for? Ya Rabb, grant me a child. I ask you by the one who made you, wouldn't many people think this guy lost his mind? Wouldn't many people say, do we have a psychologist in this masjid? You're over 80 years old and you're asking Allah for a child? Well, you know who needs help? The one who accuses that man of needing help. Because this man we're talking about is Prophet Zakaria Allah said, and his hair was flaming white, but he never gave up on Allah. Allahu Akbar. Never had a child. 80 plus years, Allah knows his exact age. And he gets excited and makes dua to Allah. He says, Inna ka sami'u dua. I know you hear me all these years. Look at his, the way he uses Allah's names. Inna ka sami'u dua. I know you've been hearing me all these years. I know it because you are a sami'. Allahu Akbar. Then he comes and he sees Maryam alayhi salam. Kullama dakhala alayha zakariya al-mihrab. Anytime zakariya the guardian of Maryam walks into her place she has provision fruits and food and not, no one brings it except me I'm your guard I'm buying, I'm buying it to you Ya Maryam how is it possible you have this Maryam this is not the season for that fruit may Allah grant us Maryams like Maryam alayhi salam with her character for all our sisters, Ami Rabbil Alameen. May Allah resurrect our brothers and sisters with Maryam alayhi salam, who reached perfection. She said, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She didn't say, well, alhamdulillah, you know, I'm pretty religious, alhamdulillah. I was born in a religious family. No, it means from Allah jalla jalla. I'm nothing. I am a nobody. It is Allah. Inna Allah yarzuku man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. Allah gives whoever he wants with no accountability. Stories like that, guess what happened? The next ayah, the next ayah. Zakariya saw the manifestation of the mother of Maryam happening. Because when Maryam was being delivered, she made dua to Allah to protect her. 
and he saw that dua being ha happening. So he made dua to Allah, Habli min ladunka dhurriya, progeny. Not one child. Look at his excitement. He's not saying, Ya Allah, grant me a child. Grant me a progeny child and grandchild and great great grandchild. Allahu Akbar. In the Kasamiyu dua, you hear me. Next ayah. The angels called upon him. Anna Allah yubashir. Good news, Yah. Good news, Zakaria. What is it? Allah will grant you a child and Allah named him Yahya. So all these stories and many, 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 many more. All these things to wake us up, to make dua to Allah. Know who you are asking from changes everything. When you know Allah, you can be slightly unrealistic. Yes, be slightly unrealistic because you deal with the one who can do whatever he wants. Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. I say whatever I have said and I seek Allah to forgive me and forgive you. So seek Allah's forgiveness in these few seconds. You will sit, inshallah, pray to Allah. Wallahi, wallahi, you might have committed the greatest of sins, the whole package. You sealed it all. Everything is unlocked. You did it, you did it, you did it, you did it. Wallahi, a few moments of regret and repentance right now. Seconds of feeling bad, of promising Allah, you will do your best not to do it again. Right now, Allah will forgive it all, inshallah. So go, seek Allah's forgiveness. May Allah forgive us all. Bismillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. May Allah accept your du'as. And may Allah forgive us for how little du'a we make. May Allah forgive us for how little du'a we make. Allah says in the Quran, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِ Allah is telling you, ask me. Nowadays, you, you're nervous when you want to go ask someone, will he accept? Is he going to mind it? Does he think I'm nagging? Allah tells you, ask me. Then he says, I promise I'll respond. Allahu Akbar. Now to end with the last uh, seven minutes that we have. I know Salah starts at 2.15. What is your job now? So we spoke about Allah and there's much more to talk about. Now what assignment you should do from your side in addition to learning about Allah? Number one. When you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, the condition for it to happen in terms of Allah responding, you have to be certain, 100% certain. If right now I'm coughing, I ask Brother Adib, the Mu'addin, may Allah bless him, may Allah accept from him, may Allah honor his parents, may Allah make Adib the coolness of the eyes of his parents. If I ask Adib, Jazakallah khair, water please, water. Not a single one of you, not one, look at the confidence, not one of you, brother or sister will think, Brother Adib will not do it. Not one of you. You're like, for sure he'll give you the water. He will run get you the water. How dare you and dare myself go ask Allah and say, will he really give it to me? A'udhu Billah. Disrespectful. Very disrespectful. Very, very disrespectful to Allah. That's what Rasulullah says. He says, Ud'u Allah. Look what the Prophet says. Ud'u Allah wa antum muqinuna bil ijaba. Make dua to Allah and you're 100 million percent certain Allah will respond. Ya Rabb, ighfir li. Ya Rabb, barik. Ya Rabb, ishfin. Ya Rabb, Allah will respond. The brother, I did it many times. Wallahi, I'm not being disrespectful, but I did it many times and he didn't respond. No, 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 no. What you're trying to say is this. You asked many times, he did not give you what you asked for, but guess what? He responded in another way. Very two different things. We'll, we'll touch on that, inshallah. What other thing you have to do? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says about a man who's traveling, another condition we should fulfill. You want your dua to be accepted? There's many things. Face the qibla, that's an additional. Have wudu, excellent. Begin with alhamdulillah, fantastic. Use Allah's names, customize it. What do you want? You're sick? Use Allah's name, al shafi You want a child? Use Allah's name, Al-Wahhab. Customize it. Oh, great stuff. What is very critical? Rasulullah sallam says, a man was traveling. Ash'at, aghbar, struggling, dusty, very humble. So when you're traveling, Allah accepts your dua very much. Yes. When you're humble and weak, Allah accepts your dua very much. Yes, two check marks. Like Arafah, they have Arafah, they are exhausted. Allah loves it. Number three, the Prophet says, فَيَقُولْ يَفْعَيَدَيْهِ He says, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb. He says, Ya Allah, Ya Rabb. 
Third check mark. Allahu Akbar. This brother is nailing it. But then the Prophet ﷺ says, however, his food is from haram. His drink is from haram. His clothing is from haram. How can that person expect Allah to respond? May Allah protect us. May Allah purify our income. Allah knows the state that we live in, that it is almost, I won't say it's impossible, I would say I am comfortable saying I am almost. It is almost impossible for us to have 100% halal income. It is almost impossible nowadays to live a life that every single thing that you get, every single thing that you do is 100%. So Ya Allah forgive us for the fitna that we live in. May Allah forgive us, that Allah knows what's your capacity. You have your 401k, for example. Okay, what package will you invest in? Did you put the effort? La Allah, just put whatever they match and move. No, what do you mean you just put whatever they match? Go check what options do you have. Put the, show Allah you're trying. Show Allah you're trying. This is the package. Okay, Bismillah. You go to this place, that place is very suspicious. What? Allah, this job is a job. Allah, you know, the state. Ya khid, ask. Can I not do this? Can I do that? See, will the company accept? Wallahi, Allah will open doors. Because where is your provision? Your money, your paycheck is not in dunya. Your paycheck is written in, in the heavens. But brother, that's not true because I get my paycheck in the cubicle at my office. No. The paycheck is by Allah. That cubicle is the transportation, is the means. May Allah protect us. So don't ever think it's your boss who is taking care of you financially. It is Allah Jalla Jalalu. Yes, be grateful to them. Tell them thank you for that position. Thank you. But don't ever forget to thank the source of that position. Last point before we conclude with one hadith. Another condition, there's many. I can right now make dua to Allah for a million years. All of you can say, Ameen, Ameen. I'm going to cry, Ya Rab, and wait for Ramadan and ask Allah to have this microphone in front of me go up this microphone to go up we can all pray ya allah raise the microphone ya allah raise the microphone wallahi the microphone will not be raised until i do this the microphone will not be raised until we do this inshallah the whole ummah makes dua it will not move until i do this so we make dua to allah ya allah grant me a job and you're sitting not even willing to go search for one Ya Allah, grant me cure, Ya Allah. And he didn't even ask a doctor or go online and search something reliable. Ya Allah, grant me a child and you're not knowing what is it exactly you have to do. Ya Allah, what? put the action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of Surah Ali Imran, he talks about people who make dua to Allah, dua after dua. Then Allah says, فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَنِّي لَا أُضِعُ عَمَلَ عَامِلٍ مِنْكُمْ Then Allah says, I accepted their actions. But they were making dua. But you know when he accepted their dua? He accepted their dua when they took action. Allah. So may Allah allow us to take action. In conclusion, there was a brother always in the masjid. I'll make it very short. Brother always in the masjid. I'm a witness to that. I drive, I see him walking. Brother, I'll give you a ride. Always in the masjid. Stop coming to the masjid. What's the matter? We don't know. A week passed by. So I go to his house. Assalamu alaikum. He does not respond salam. He's like, what do you want? I'm like, I didn't see you for a few weeks. You're always in the masjid. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, I have never seen him second row. Always first row. Salam, no response. Akhi, what do you want? I'm just coming to check on you. Didn't see you in the masjid for some time. He's like, I'm fine. Move on in life. I'm like, no, I'm moving nowhere in life. Because it's subjective. When you know someone, you can, it's dependent on that. What's the matter? He's like, I don't want to talk about it. what's the matter. He said, okay, we went to the basement. What's your story? He said, you know how dedicated I am to salah? Yes. I'm like, I agree. You know how I'm always in the masjid? Yes. I'm like, I'm a witness. So I'm like, what's the problem? He said, I've been making dua to Allah for the past nine months. Nine months. All kinds of different duas. Ya Allah, this, Ya Allah, every, different. Not a single one happened. Not one. Why should I worship him? Wallah, I'm telling you this personal story. Why should I worship him? Why am I saying this conclusion for this hadith to end? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, whenever you make dua to Allah, one of three things happen. When I tell you Allah will respond, does not always mean Allah will give you what you ask for. And just an FYI, you notice the younger you are, the less it really happens because we ask for things that are not good. <laughs> Number one, when we make dua to Allah, 
Allah will give you what you ask for. You want what? An X7 that is coming up, inshallah? Allah will give you X7, BMW, match. Whatever the avenue, Allah will make it happen. Number two, you ask Allah for what you want. Allah will not give you what you asked for exactly, but Allah will make your dua block a hardship that was about to fall upon you. You're about to hit someone in the parking lot. Allah saved you. You know why? Because when you were in college, you're making dua to Allah to get married, to get married to that person. Allah did not make it happen. Allah chose that dua to respond to save you from hitting someone in the parking lot. Three years later. Allah Akbar. Third and last. You make dua to Allah, Allah does not give you what you ask for. Huh? You ask Allah, He will not help you from a hardship. But then what He will do? He will make it happen in the akhirah, transform into hasanat. So which one of the best three is we should get? That one of the best three is whatever Allah sees best for you. It might be dunya, might be hasanat, might be hardship protection. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Ya Allah, Ya Arham ar rahimin Arhamna bi rahmatika allati wasi'at kulla shay. Ya Allah, the most merciful, shower your mercy upon all of us. Ya Allah, bless this masjid and bless the people who pray in this masjid. Ya Allah, make them happy. Ya Allah, lift their hardships, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Wadud, the all-loving, grant us your love and the love of those who love you and the love of the actions that lead us to your love. اللهم ارزقنا حبك وحب من يحبك وحب عمل قريبنا إلى حبك يا الله اغفر لنا يا الله تب علينا يا تواب والله فرجب اس يا الله have رحمة on all the أمة all parts of the world أمين رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا وقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين